Welcome back to Making Money Matter, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Kerry Stevenson, and I've got Tony LeCantro back. Last time I spoke to Tony, who was from Alto Capital, was just before Christmas. And here we are coming into February. Crazy times. Mm. Glad to see the chimp is back, sitting up in his foliage. Probably one of the oh, only yeah. things growing at the moment is, is you seem to be, it's like, it's like all the plants are going to take over. It's like one of those horror stories where one day, Tony, we won't be able to see you because all those plants will have just grown so much, unlike some of our stocks, but we won't go into that too. We want to start on a positive note, don't we, Tony? Oh, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, pumped for this year, Kerry. Good. I've, it's when, when you have been advising, coming up to 26 years now, can you believe it? Yeah, you when I left the too. state. When I left the safety of my New South Wales police job to become a stockbroker and, uh, you know, to have two shit years in a row, it, anyway, it's not going to be a hat trick. The value is there in, in my companies and I'm pumped. Clients, I'm trying to wind them up a bit, get them enthusiastic because we'll look back at what we're seeing now in a couple of years' time and think, why didn't I buy everything? And that is the motto I've lived with it because either the market is dead and my career is finished or yeah. we're going to make a shitload of money. So the value is there. I, I think that uh, stocks are certainly going to move shortly. And once some of my companies get to fair value, anywhere near it, you're going to get four or 500% upside. So this is going to be the year, I think, if, yeah, you know, this is the fight back 2025 off the charts. And again, I'll be swimming in money. And this time I'll make a post-it note, Tony, take profits. Oh, look, Tony, I remember, uh, we won't name the company, but I remember a couple of years ago when a, a particular stock uh, took a big ride and you said to me, Kerry, take some profits. Why would I listen to you, Tony? I like to ride it all the way up and I rode it all the way down. I'm now out of that stock completely, but I rode it all the way down almost to the bottom. But, uh, you know, some people say you should have hung in there, but you know what? I prefer to take the pain right now. But it's interesting what you say, and I want to ask you a question on this one. You say, this is, this is going to be the year. Yeah. Why? Why 2024? What's changed? To me, nothing much has changed. It's We're still swimming in murky waters and trying to push treacle uphill? Well, there's always going to be a reason to sell. I remember back you'd sell on a car bomb in Baghdad or you'd sell because Italy or Greece was in financial strife. Look, I, I think it's going to be a focus on quality because a lot of the effluent is flowing now. A lot of stocks, companies that have backdoored in projects that are never going to happen, the market just doesn't get excited about lithium acquisitions at the moment. That's where all the hot money went. It's okay. going to have to find a new home. And that that's it. It's just a case of the money will move to anything with a pulse. And there's so much fundamental value that it's our time to shine now because we've, we've had two years of pain. I've watched my portfolio decay like a junkie's teeth. Now... <laughs> it's going to be the reverse, Kerry, and we're going to start to see return to fundamentals. One of my stocks, Barry Fitzgerald, puts out a positive article and the stock goes up 50%, 60% at one point. So they'll start paying attention to undervalue, not backdoor deals where a company finds a lithium project on the moon and goes 500%. So every cycle since dot com is the same thing. Okay. And I think you know, the bullshit's got to slow up. Let's get back to, music always gets back to guitars, bass and drums. Let's get back to simple speculation where if you buy low, company delivers, you sell high. So big things are mining stocks, gold stocks, so cheap. There's value everywhere. Biotech uh, is an absolute train wreck. And there's so much value because a lot of these biotech companies are just getting on with what they said they would. Yet once you're in a downtrend, um, it's hard to breach it. So yeah, I'm I'm absolutely enthusiastic, excited. Probably got far too much mental energy for people at the moment, based <laughs> on um, I've become addicted to being healthy, 
instead of addicted to quarter panda meals with a fill our fish and 20 nuggets on the side, Kerry. Oh, it makes me feel sick even hearing you say that. Um, mm. You know, Tony, and, and congratulations. Well done. Well, we're Thank we're you. both in that sort of healthy phase at the moment. I'm not quite as crazy as you with, with the no alcohol whatsoever. Um, but a couple mm. of things I wanted to mm. ask you. I, I recently, just this week, interviewed Rick Rule, um, actually on Australia Day. And one of the things he said was, Kerry, expiration is out of favour. I'm going back into the expiration game. Would you agree with that statement? Oh, absolutely. And exploration is something I've actually noted that our largest, most, most significant discoveries, it doesn't matter what the market's doing. Prominent Hill, shitty market, serious. Um, when they, Nova Bollinger, the market was hideous. Yeah. Sandfire drilled into their copper. Doesn't matter. You make a discovery, it doesn't matter if it's, Gold, uranium, copper, plastic dog poo, you are going to go, you're going to get re-rated by the market. A lot of these stocks actually overshoot to the upside. So a lot of the majors need to replenish resources and they'll partner up with juniors, they'll fund juniors, and they'll just take them over because it's easier to buy ounces than for a major to go through the process to find it. So exploration to me is an area that you should stay fully invested in that portion of your portfolio because you got to back the companies that have the balls to go out and drill deep holes. A lot of them are getting government money thrown at them. So, yeah, I think Rick, from my experience, is the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> uh, he is not only smart, he's also ruthless. So I can imagine the deals he's getting at the moment and he's just going to set him up. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably get to billionaire status. And, and he st if he still talks to you, then um, fantastic. Yeah, no, Rick's very, very kind with his time. He's, he's As he said, he's busier uh, now than he ever has been, and he's meant to be retired. So um, that's mm. quite fun. And for the, those out there, um, I will be heading over to his conference in Boca Raton, Florida, which is the 7th to the 11th of July. Tony, you should come over. Great conference. Bloody hot over there in July, but uh, it's still a good conference. And Rick walks the floor talks to all the investors, and he tells me he's going to have a number of um, Aussie companies over there. He's got Deep Yellow coming. He's got Boss Energy. That, that's on the uranium side. Uh, I know he's got on the rare earth side, I think he's got Meteoric. A bunch of Aussie companies are going to be there. So my, I want to encourage each and every one of the people that listen to you and I to come over to Boca Raton in July, come to the Rick Rule Conference, and let's show them uh, a big Aussie contingent over there. That would be fun. And if we get enough people over there, I reckon Rick might put on a special lunch for us or something. I think oh, I'd probably have to set up a GoFundMe page. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, um, I don't think Juliana could justify. Look, I, I've said to people, I want to go to PDAC at Toronto at the top of the market. Right. I want to go to these events when everyone's falling over themselves to buy and I'm I'm selling everything. I think that they're, they're events you, you celebrate at the top of the market. Uh, yeah, I'd love to go to um, love to go to Florida. Never been there. Uh, of um, yeah, so I think that that's great. And as I mentioned, Rick's Rick's got some nous. We hear all his stories. His interviews highly recommended. And if any anyone wants to fund my trip to Florida, uh, you know where to find me. <laughs> love it. I'll tell Rick that. Um, yeah, you mentioned just uh, a few moments ago about how there was a couple of commodities you like, but you also said that the majors are going to be looking at some of the juniors and doing and scooping them up because it's cheaper for them to do that. So do you think 2024 is going to be the year of M&A action? I think, it's, I think it'll continue on. And if some of these companies with stranded gold resources don't get married, I think the problem with the gold industry, everyone's deposit is bigger than the others and it's all ego driven. So I think some people are going to have to give up a bit, maybe merge and then wait for the majors to come in and scoop them up. But there's a lot of ounces in the ground that aren't valued at what they should be. Normally, you know, 40 to $60 an ounce in the ground. Some of them are trading at 10 to 20 and yeah. quality ounces as well. I think viewers should go do their own research. Uh, we've spoken about one in particular at, you know, satin, satin metals. Again, um, do your own research, but these 
I know that there's going to be some M&A. There's lots of speculation around. Uh, obviously, the lithium nickel sectors have seen a bit of M&A and despite the fact that the commodities have crashed. So it's going to be a time where even a lot of gold, you know, Northern Star is having great quarters. They've got lots of cash. What are they going to do with it? Uh, dividends, spin out some assets, who knows? So send, looking... Tony, send Tony to Boca Raton. <laughs> oh, look, I'm sure, I'm sure, um, you know, we could get that. I, I'd love, I'd love to go. I've um, just booked a trip for us to go to Coal Samui. I've, I've worked my ass off for too long. I think I need a resort holiday. I need to unwind just to get reset because, uh, you know, you've got to, got to take some time away from the market. But didn't you do you... that over Christmas? Um, oh, the funny thing about being a, an advisor is that ideas are always ticking in my head and I, I actually printed out the page from the financial review and hit it with a highlighter and I found a couple of gems um, and I'm just mm -hmm. easing my way into them. I'm going to start talking to clients about it, but some of them are so illiquid, it, you've got a one client at a time and, and they trade by appointment, but that ex exercise is worth it because I find some gems I look at the management, I say, wait a minute, this is the next such and such. Some of these stocks have gone to 80, 90 cents and are back at seven to 10 with the same assets. So oh, I think that this is probably one of the greatest buying opportunities I've seen in years. I know I say that quite a bit. Yeah, uh, what's driven, what has driven companies that, as you said, were 80, 90 cents and now back to seven cents is it just the psychology of the markets? Yep. Is it the fact that the, everyone, all the hot money piled into lithium and lithium's looking a bit on the nose at the moment? But I do, I think lithium will be okay in the long run. It's it's doing what it did. It's kind of like um, crypto, does what it does, mm. hits the skids, comes back again. Um, uh, I think once you get in a downturn, it's hard to reverse it. A lot of these companies need money because they're real, so they have to raise money at a huge discount. The market yeah. gets wind of that, sells it down some more, and uh, I just need to cough. Sorry, <coughs> pardon me. And uh, that's the way it goes. So I've I've got my hit list, and that's what I can do as an advisor. And you know, uh, I, I did a column today. Buy, hold, sell was released, and I actually had line selection in there. I saw that. Yes, mm, that's uh, mm. for those of you that don't know. The ASX code is LSG. Uh, LSX. Uh, sorry, LSX. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and our good friend Headley Whitup is there. Why do you like Lion Selection? Um, Headley's a mini Rick Rule. He's Rick Rule light. Let's call Headley. <laughs> and um, I'll tell, I'll tell Headley to watch this conversation. Hi, Headley. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, yeah, you know, stocks trading at 42, 43, NTA 62, 63. He's got big positions at cheap prices. I'm sure he's got some seed capital there. And I just think it's a good place to cornerstone as a junior resource investor because uh, he does pay the occasional dividend and the share price should move up as his NTA moves up. And I think last time he had about $70 million to spend. Nice. It'd be like letting someone loose in a Louis Vuitton store and saying, just take whatever, buy whatever you want. I, I just think he is in the perfect position, Kerry. And sometimes in speculation, it's good to go boring to have something that cornerstones your portfolio. He's going to be money in the bank if you need it. And he's run by some uh, Rick Rule Light. I mean, I, I think it's an outstanding longer term buy. What uh, in terms of a portfolio structure? We've not mm. talked about this before, Tony, because uh, Rick often says that he's a, an in, a, an investor and a speculator. And on that sort mm. of smaller end of the market, you're definitely more on the speculator side of things. Mm. If you were to structure a portfolio, and let me know if you if you don't want to talk about this, but I was just wondering whether you would, you know, is there a percentage that you would put into that sort of much more specy market? Would it be ten percent? I mean. Do you have some advice for people out there that are not your clients as to yeah. potentially what they should be doing? Because like going 100% into speculation is probably not the brightest idea. Well, I, I've i got a niche. I don't stray outside of that. Mm -hmm. I stick. If someone's worth a million bucks, they might come to me and say, look, I'm willing to lose 50 grand. Over the last two years, I did a pretty good job of that. Now, uh, 
it's time to reverse that. So I suggest five to 10%. Uh, anyone that wants to take some risk, but my risk is educated risk and I've had two bad years in a row. So when a portfolio, I have had a couple of people come to me with 200 grand and I am buying, I'm putting 20 grand into line, line and I'm also buying some BBUS uh. as index protection because I think the US market's going to run out of steam soon. And once they eventually cut interest rates in the States, the market will fall because it always does. So well, just explain to our listeners out there, some of them might not know the BBUS and uh, and why that's the, the hedge that you like. Uh, it bets against the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. uh, so for every 1%, the S&P 500 falls, BBUS should go up uh, just over 2%. So if the market continues to rise, it goes the other way. Uh, but sometimes they'll come out and surprise with a, a dividend because they do trade futures and a couple of years ago we got a dollar 12 dividend it was fantastic so they're trading at about six dollars sixty okay but what i'm trying to do for clients is say look cornerstone it with these two instruments and then we go we go hell for leather on the other stuff okay so <laughs> pardon me don't don't go all in with a speculation ladies and gentlemen um you mentioned gold, and it would be remiss mm. of me not to remind people that the Australian Gold Conference will be back at Crown on the 26th to the 28th of August this year. Mm -hmm. Tell us why you're liking gold at the moment. Is it because you believe that uh, we're in for some interesting times? What's what, Or you think that people just haven't been watching gold at all? Oh, it's, it's just the undervaluation. I've never seen gold companies per ounce in the ground so cheap when the US gold price is $2,025 an ounce. It is ridiculous. I'm looking at companies that are going to move into production. I'm looking at people like Mark Clark that built Capricorn from nothing. I'm looking at Ian Bambra as Saturn as the potentially to follow the likes of Capricorn. I'm looking at smart people like Brad Velukas from Oyaman, who's had two years of copying it. That guy's got the smarts. These companies are going to grow. And since I've been a broker, 1998, I've watched companies like Equigold, Saracen, we're buying Remilius at six cents. It went to three bucks equivalent. Then it's 50 bag twice. I just love gold. You make a big gold discovery. There's no fever like gold fever. And I'm just going to give myself a cheap plug, Kerry. If people no, want to get my monthly insights, I've got a website, uh, Ron Osborne. Put it together for free which was great it's uh tony .com. register there i'll send you some rubbish and uh don't say that <laughs> oh I'll send some stuff i mean it's that's tony lacantro light you know i'm not going to give away everything um you know these days you know people need to at least buy me a cup of coffee as a cheap date so I, uh, look i agree with that uh so so in terms of the market, hmm. you think 2024 is going to be a stronger market. Don't sit on the sidelines. Don't sit in cash. If you sit in cash, inflation will eat it away. You've got, but don't go putting all of your eggs in one basket. Make sure that you do some research or become a client of Tony's yeah. at Alto Capital. Um, yeah. But look, I I think there's index risk now. Uh, I think US. I'd rather have a low. Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and S&P 500. I'd like a lower ASX 200. So yes, there's going to be times where you're going to see 3 5% off the market. It's probably yep. due for a correction. But I think specs have been that beaten up. Maybe there might be a shift to, to smaller companies because I've got sent a chart today, which I'll actually, I'll send to people that register and my clients that this could be the time for small caps to outperform. Hmm. But Viewers should remember that there's always a reason not to buy Kerry, and that's geopolitical, social, stage three tax cuts. Um, it's the West Indies beating us in the cricket. There's oh, always, a reason, the cricket. always a reason not to buy stocks. Oh, don't mention the cricket, Tony. We were doing oh, so sorry. well there for a moment. But yep. we can't mention the tennis. That was bloody fantastic. Good on Yannick Sinner uh, beating Medvedev uh, oh, in, in the Australian Open. Massive. 
young man, 22 years old. And you know what that tells me? That tells me never give up, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter. He was two sets down and then he turned the whole thing around and won the next three sets. What a weapon he was. Well, he can be my red-headed stepchild any time. Yeah, for an Italian, he doesn't look Italian. All right. Oh, well, I'm a token Italian, for viewers wondering. Uh, I want to ask you about uranium. The uranium mm. price has hit 100. It's interesting, Andrew Viger from Terra Uranium was saying, uh, I think it was probably the uh, just after the first, se- into the second half of last year, he said uranium will get to 100 bucks, and everyone thought he was crazy. Look, he's crazy now. We all are. Mm. Do you think uranium still got life in it? I, I do, but I think in some cases the the stocks have overshot to the upside a little bit. Okay. Uh, I I think um, Sherman Partners came out with 150 uh, on wow. it. There was a bit of press around that. Uh, can Paladin get their stuff together? I actually put a t- uh, take profits on Paladin just because it's had such a huge run. You've got to take profits on the way. But um, yeah, I think. This uranium bubble has been via stealth um, because the one I got in 2005, 2006 was dot com all over. And that was that was an insane bubble. I don't think share prices are going to do what they did then. Uh, it's probably going to be a new sector. But those in the Athabascan Basin, you know, we'd like in Canada, we'd like to see some exploration success because I got involved in Basin uh, run by Pete Morehouse. Share price halved. No interest. Uh, we stocked up. I think they got to about 2021. 20, so you've got to look at it. Uh, what sector is going to provide the returns like lithium? We might be some way off, but I'm, I'm banking on silver and my two favourite companies, uh, Red Metal Moronin, and hopefully a run to silver because silver, I think, could could really do it for us. Or it could be something else ending in IUM. But, yeah, no, I'm positive on uranium. Just take profits along the way. And, uh, yeah, just in, in this type of market, guys, uh, if you've got the balls, um, swing hard. Because, again, in two to three years' time, we'll probably say, well, why didn't I sell everything, sell the mother-in-law, sell the kidney to get involved? Sell some drugs. I didn't say I, that, kid. It's I didn't uh, say that. Are you are you looking at the nickel market at the moment? That's had an absolute battering, not quite as bad as lithium, but it's had a bit of a battering, a couple of mines closing down. Rick Rule has a, a view on it. You can watch the interview, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to give away what he said, but uh, you, you're looking at the nickel market at all or are you sticking to your fundamentals of silver, gold, uranium? I, I look at exploration companies uh, and there is there is one that's had the living bejesus belted out of it in Stavely. Oh, hasn't it? Oh, my God. Chris, Chris Cairns, my heart goes out to you, mate. But, you know, he's going to keep going. Why well, has that it, been battered so badly? Uh, sentiment. Uh, the people latch on to the fact that he hasn't found the porphyry system yet in Victoria. He's, <laughs> in his quarterly, uh, he talks about the nickel narrative and how their project Hawkstone has got the potential for a nickel discovery. And he, Chris is right that if you discover something, it doesn't matter what the commodity is, it could be cocktail umbrellas, you make a big discovery of that, and you make money. So I think it's worth backing, but what, at what price does Stavely bottom? Because in 2019, I was in the UK and I was selling that stock for clients in the $1.30s. And it's just given up everything and then some, Kerry. It's um, I've, you've got to feel for these real people um, going, you know, it's like Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank Redemption climbing through all that sewerage to, to get out of there. Absolutely. it's a, that's, a, that's a good analogy. Look, before we finish up, I just want to ask you one yeah. quick question on biotechs. Uh, yeah. Do you think it's biotechs year to shine? It's been absolutely belted, as you said at the beginning. Yeah. I think uh, Dimerics... One of my favourite biotechs has been a good result uh, for clients, even though we've got a binary outcome coming. Uh, Chimeric have struggled for money. They've done some more shortfall. Radio Farm, research reports keep coming out with 70 cents on them, Kerry. They're trading at seven. Uh, I must disclose to viewers, we're as full as a selective state school on Radio Farm and Chimeric. (laughs) And I think... 
I think Paul Hopper needs a good. I think he is due for a good year eventually because that's these companies. Let's face it, haven't done too much wrong, but when sent when the when sentiment gets sucked out, uh, you certainly struggle. And then speculators are ruthless. They'll target any company that's struggling money wise, and they get sold off. So uh, I'm hoping for some reversals there. And um, a lot of these companies, Neuron struggled for years. Look at them, you know, one dollar to wherever they are now, and you know, two to a couple of years in speculation is a bloody long time. So, um, yep, go hard or go home is my suggestion. And you know what? I'm going to put it out there, Paul Hopper. If you're looking at this, reach out to me. Come on the channel. Tell your story. Haven't had you on the channel yet, Mr. Hopper. It's time. Mm. Time to get on Making Money Matter and tell them what the story <laughs> is. Uh, Tony, final word yep. goes to you, my friend. Uh, how do they, first of all, if they want to become a client, what's the best way for them to do that, number one? And number two, two things, two to three things that you say people should be doing right now. All right. Uh, TonyLacanto.com, register for my speculative insights. You can actually write a message if you want to talk about becoming a client. I'm hopefully... Now's the time. If you want to come on board, now's the time. Because when I'm too busy, I've got loyal people I'd rather look after. I don't want any people showing up at 3 a.m. holding a <laughs> vegan pizza, Kerry. You either come in now, I don't want the FOMOs. Because once you once you put someone in the top, at the top, they're a bad client for life. I don't want that anymore. That's true. Join. Uh, three things. Read. The, there's going to be a plethora of quarterly reports. Read, Just quarterly. Read, read through the companies I've mentioned. Um, you can go back. Actually, on my X, my pinned tweet is the interactive session I did for clients on my top stocks. It's there oh. on X. Go have a look. All right. That's that's really good advice. Go to X. Uh, check out Tony LeCamp. Follow me. Um, take it or leave it. I, I've got no agenda. I don't tell lies. I just put it out there and then there'll come a point where I'll be proven right. And, but I don't want clients when I'm proven right. I'd rather have clients join me when things are tough and be loyal. They're, you know, loyalty is lacking in anything these days. So sure is. that's, that's my, my advice. And my advice to all of you out there as well is to stop watching Netflix and start reading quarterlies. You might find that at the beginning, it's a bit tough for you. Uh, but the more you do, the more you read, the smartest men that and women that I know in the world are people who read. They don't get up in the morning and scroll on their phone. They get up and they read and they educate themselves. So rather than watching Married at First Sight, um, read a quarterly, get used to it, get to understand it. And also I think that you should reach out to uh, the, the, the companies themselves. Uh, we've got two events coming up uh, this week. Of course, Read Corporate have got their Resources Rising Stars Conference up in Brisbane. Uh, I think they've got 18 companies. So that face-to-face -face is is really important. And uh, sometime this week, I'll be doing an interview with Stuart McDonald, who is running the Explorers Conference in Perth. I'm going to be at both. I'll be in Brisbane this Thursday for the uh, Resources Rising Stars Conference. Hope to see lots of you there. And then I'm heading off to Perth from the 13th to the, I think it's 13th to the 15th. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm going to Frio. There we go. We'll both be and, there, gentlemen. You get the day. You get the double. And I have a confession for viewers. I love Married at First Sight. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right. There you have it. Hurts hot off the press, ladies and gentlemen. He loves Married at First Sight. If you see him at Explorers, maybe maybe get him a Put t-shirt. Shit on me. Married Put at First Sight. What? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, happy. Happy. Uh, pay me out. That's fine. <laughs> I'd love to pay you out. Tony Lecandro, Alto Capital. We'll see you in Fremantle, but in the meantime, stay safe, keep punching, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, look forward to it, Kerry. Thanks, viewers, for your support. Thank you.